Mickey, it's been six or seven years now that the Clark County Arts Plan has been in place. Maybe if we could, let's just start there and talk a little bit about how this funding mechanism goes to provide funds for public art in Clark County. Yeah, definitely. It's called the County Arts Plan, and it is an ordinance um, that the commissioners had uh, brought up or approved in 2012, and it started in 2013. And so that uh, ordinance takes money from uh, the hotel taxes, and that's what funds this public art. Um, it takes a small percentage, about 5%, then the commissioners have put a cap on our, our program, so it's 1.25 million a year is what, what we could get from those taxes. And we've seen a number of completed projects. Talk about some of the completed projects we saw last year in 2018. Definitely. In 2018, we completed uh, ZAP 10, which was off of Cheyenne, uh, near the um, College of Southern Nevada. And then we also had, in Overton, Nevada, we had our Moapa Community mural project and so that's part one of part two that's going to come out this year. I know we spent a lot of time with Jig and the other two artists out there that yeah. Jig's work is amazing his Into the Muddy talk a little bit about his project. Yeah so it's a it's a large mural um, painting that is on actually on canvas and it is 11 feet high by 40 feet long. Um, it is an oil painting I mean, you're just not gonna see this type of painting anywhere in the, in the West. And so it's such a uh, uh, neat project for public art to have this large oil painting in a building in Clark County. And his subject matter is kind of how, um, how we end up becoming a city there, right? And, and became a town there. So it's all about the mining, it's about the people that came in and started shops and started farming and everything else. He also combined with Heidi, a couple of local artists there, I believe Heidi Levitt and Joan Day, and they also contributed to the larger project of this, this whole yes. uh, effort. Yes, they did. So um, during the call for art, uh, artists for that, that particular project, Joan and Heidi were actually the semi-finalists along with Jig. And so when Jig won the uh, major piece, Heidi and Joan had actually also made little paintings that, um, that they were putting forward for the design. And so each individual painting from all three artists were, were totally different, but the same premise about, um, about Moapa Valley. And so Clark County chose to purchase those two paintings. Uh, we, we did a little bit of rehab on them, made them uh, framed and uh, wall gallery acceptable, right? And we put them out at the recreation center, which is across um, or right next to the community center. So it's, it's a wonderful project. Uh, there's a little thing that we do with that project where Jones and Heidi's pieces are. And so we have a book where locals can write down their stories. So we're starting to do an oral history of like, how did you come to live in Moapa Valley? So it's pretty neat. Such rich, rich history out there. Something I'm excited about, and I'm sure <clears throat> everyone in Parks and Rec and the Art Department and everything is, mm -hmm. I believe it's called Organic Study Number no. 2 by the Renewable Energy Team. And that's out of Desert Diamonds. And it's a fantastic, pitcher holding a baseball. The amount of work that Luis and Pam and Michael have done on that is amazing and it's going to blow, it, it's going to be a grand slam out there. Oh, 100%. So um, that piece is made out of steel. It is 18 tons and, um, and you're right, Renewable Envoy, they, um, they, they basically took sheets of metal and they had a plasma cutter that cut out basically these large puzzle pieces. And then the artists started to stack and weld those pieces. So it's, a, it's just an awesome piece. It's um, nothing that Clark County has ever purchased before. Uh, it is a unique piece. So we're very excited about that. We're gonna have a reception here pretty soon. And um, 
Mickey, that's going to be such an amazing component for Desert Diamonds, which is an ama uh, a gem of a baseball complex. Nothing like we have for 90-foot uh, base paths and 90-foot uh, diamonds that we have in Clark County. Right, and that's, that's the great thing about having um, public art in these spaces. Clark County is really excited about this baseball park. Uh, we are in hopes that uh, we'll have major baseball tournaments out there. And I think it's a wonderful thing for County Arts Plan to have a piece out there for local artists, for a local artist to have that piece. We're really starting to um, help out the community even in a larger um, spectrum. If you think about it, you're gonna have people from all over the country, maybe even the world coming out to that baseball park and who knows, maybe they'll connect with the artists on a different level. Maybe, you know, it exposes the artists to a much grander scale. There will be thousands and thousands of Instagram posts and social media posts on that. And of course, we've just talked about that amazing team and Jig and his work. Those were all call to art submissions. And yes. you've got a couple on the table right now. One for out in Moapa at the double negative gateway and also Nell Sealing at the Air Force Base. Tell yes. me about those two. Yeah, so um, the uh, Nellis Absolute Ceiling is a call for aviation sculpture um, in the median. And that's off of Nellis, um, in between Nellis and Lamb on Las Vegas Boulevard. We don't have the exact details of what that's gonna be because we want artists to apply and give us the design. So there's not too much detail I could give. Uh, the due date for that call is March 8th. And so people that are interested, you need to um, submit your qualifications and you would do that uh, by looking up Clark County contract opportunities and getting into the Clark County purchasing webpage where you can see those contracts and you apply through there. Um, now the double negative gateway piece, that is also a sculpture. Um, that sculpture is a little bit more unique for us because it's going to be, um, the call can be kinetic so those pieces could move around and um, and it's just a great throwback to the, well, it's a gateway piece to um, Michael Heisner's Double Negative, which is a land art sculpture or land art public art piece um, there on the Mesa over Overton. And so the art committee, when they had uh, chosen this piece and thought it would be a great recommendation for Clark County, um, their idea was was to give them give people that are coming in from all over the world to see Michael Heisner's piece to give them a little place marker for okay this is where you turn to go up to the double negative and so it's going to be right outside of uh, where Jig's piece is and so we're kind of making this nice little hub right there in Overton of Clark County facilities and then bringing the Clark County art there as well. So that will just help accentuate Mr. Heisner's internationally renowned double negative piece then, right? 100%, but it'll also bring in even more people to go out and experience Michael's piece, to experience the new piece, which also brings in visitors to spend money down in Overton on you know, getting food, getting gas, that kind of stuff. So it's a really great mix there. We're sitting now about I guess 18 months after the most horrific, one of the most horrific days in our city's history of October 1st. And finally now the time seems to be right with the UMC Healing Garden design. Is that yeah. something that will be tied in as a memorial to the one October tragedy? It, so it won't be a tie in. Um, the uh, Clark County commissioners had approved this project back in 2016. And any, um, you know, we do have a healing garden already in city of Las Vegas for one October. And our arts fund is, does have money set aside for a one October memorial. But UMC is, even though anyone could go and see this garden, it was really meant to be for patients, for loved ones of the patients and even hospital staff to get away and get into an area where they could kind of calm their mind, calm their anxiety. Um, healing gardens aren't a new, new idea. 
it was much popular back in the day and it's kind of petered out since. And so the art committee just wanted to bring that back into the fold of, you know, a good place to go. Are we asking for calls for artists on that or what, what's the so status that, of that project? So that one, uh, the calls are closed now. And so it's in a jury process right now. We'll have a jury, we'll look at all of those submittals and those submittals, mind you, are calls for qualification. So it's the artist's letter of intent, it's their resume, and it's a few images of their artwork. From there, a jury's gonna look at those um, applications, they're gonna score them, and then they're gonna, out of that, the top scores are going to be selected to then be, to make a design. And the great thing about county, by doing a call for qualifications, um, the artists don't have to spend so much time on applying, and those that do get selected will be compensated for their design. So instead of spinning your wheels and, and not getting anything, you kind of know that you're going to be paid ahead of time, right? We have so many amazing local artists here, and maybe one of the most unlikely locations and one of the coolest pieces of art is Jesse Carson Smigel's piece out at the Clark County Shooting Complex. I told you not to paint it hot orange. I told you not to paint it hot orange. Now, yes. you and the shooting complex, or you're calling for, actually you want children to participate in an art contest out there. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, definitely. So yes, the the shooting park has a Connex, which is a, a it's a movable storage unit, and um, it's a, just a big metal rectangle, basically. And so they wanted to freshen it up. They wanted to, um, you know, put some art on this. And what greater, better way than have children um, participate? So the call is a design competition for the artwork that will go on that Connex. Also, not exactly in your department, but the Poet Laureate, the Clark County Poet Laureate, Vogue Robinson, she is just wrapping up her two-year term, and we're asking for another Poet Laureate. Talk to me about that. So the Poet Laureate is a two-year term, as you said, and uh, we have the call out. I, I believe the deadline is June 1st for the, for the call. And the Poet Laureate, um, uh, basically goes around Clark County and does what they do best. They do poetry and they do poetry events. And so by being the Poet Laureate, you are uh, kind of a champion for Clark County. Uh, Clark County does pay a stipend of $10,000 for each year for that position. And it, it's just a wonderful thing to get involved in. So if you have any interest in this, I would contact Winchester Cultural Center about Poet Laureate. And Mickey, I know you're excited about a few other, some new type things coming up for 2019. Tell me about them. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we have this program that we've just renamed and it's called the Full Focus. And what it is, is it's a professional workshop series for local artists. I'm bringing in public artists from all over the country to come and talk about how you become a public artist, how do you, um, you know, submit for these RFQs, how do you go about finding engineers, just every aspect of public art um, is what we teach. And so those are always on the second Saturday and Sunday of each month. Um, you don't have to go to both days, it's the same lecture both days. We tend to travel around town on the Saturdays, and so you wanna check out our Facebook or, or contact us to find out those locations. But the Sunday is always here at the Government Center and um, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right, well, keep yeah. up the good work. We appreciate you spending time with us. Definitely, thank you.